shadow grows on the wall behind you, swallowing you in darkness. It is almost here. What is it? What if it's the Demogorgon? Oh, Jesus, we're so screwed if it's the Demogorgon. It's not the Demogorgon. An army of troglodytes charge into the chamber. Troglodytes. Told you. <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons. A legendary tabletop RPG that has millions of players all around the world and has been making a push into mainstream media in recent years. But it wasn't always like that. When Ernest Gary Gygax and David Arneson were at Gygax's house in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, they decided to make a game that anybody could play with just a simple rulebook and their imagination. So they did exactly that. They started the creation of Dungeons and Dragons and went as far as to have game designers and Gary Gygax's own son help beta test the early editions of the game. People would come over and, and play and they were game designers and stuff who worked with my dad with a weird mix of uh, neighborhood kids too. It wasn't all smooth sailing, however. Once they had finished the original version, not one company was willing to take it on. So, as you do, Gary Gygax decided to create his own publishing company called Tactical Studies Rules, or TSR for short. TSR sold 150 copies of D&D in its first month, and by summer, over a thousand. This success led Gary to become a full-time game designer for D&D, and over the next 10 years, to go from being a self-employed cobbler in Wisconsin to living in a mansion in Beverly Hills. Being so popular didn't come without ridicule. During the peak of its popularity, Dungeons and Dragons found itself with one massive enemy. The church. Take a look at this image behind me. What do you think these people are doing? Do you say satanic worship? No? Well, you'd be right. These people are just playing D&D. But, during the time called the Satanic Panic, the Catholic churches believed that D&D was a form of Satanism. They claimed this because they said that you were giving up your free will to the DM, which, if anybody watching this plays D&D, you know that's not how it works. Most of the time the DM is the person with least amount of power, and the players basically get to do what they want. Dr. David Waldron, author of Role Playing Games and the Christian Right, Community Formation in Response to a Moral Panic says, Since fantasy typically features activities like magic and witchcraft, D&D was perceived to be in direct opposition to biblical precepts and established thinking about witchcraft and magic. There was also a view that youth had an inability to distinguish between fantasy and reality. Hey, it's all imagination. Is it? Due to this misconception that players couldn't tell the difference between what was fake and what was real, there were hundreds, if not thousands, of teen suicides that were blamed on D&D, even if the child had never even played the game. The parents were actually saw their child summon uh, Dungeons and Dragons demons into his room before he killed himself. After the satanic panic seemed to have cleared up, Gary Gygax was forced out of TSR, the publishing company he started, and it was then bought out by Wizards of the Coast, who were looking to expand after the recent boom of success from their hit game, Magic the Gathering. A huge resurgence took place after that deal went through, thanks to a new edition of D&D and an intro story published by Wizards of the Coast, partially written by Gygax himself. Thanks to the new edition and the new story, new players were flooding into game shops to get all of the different content that Wizards of the Coast was producing for D&D. Hey, look! A Dungeons and Dragons ride! Wow! Neat! Give me a break! I don't like this! Whoa! What's happening? Whoa! The first push to get D&D into mainstream media was when TSR, Toei Animation, and Marvel Productions all came together and made the first ever D&D cartoon. Barbarian, magician, thief, cavalier, and acrobat. Who was that? That was Venger, the force of evil. I am Dungeon Master, your guide in the realm of Dungeons and Dragons. 
But what if I told you that in 1982, a very young Tom Hanks starred in Mazes and Monsters, a D&D live action movie that was meant to demote the game rather than to promote it. I have spells. I'm going to fly. You don't have enough points. I am the maze controller, and I have absolute authority in this game. Game? Game. DJ, what am I doing here? This movie was made in the middle of the satanic panic and is very obviously trying to avoid copyright claims from TSR and from Gary Gygax himself. More recently, Stranger Things has been showing its D&D roots by having two of the biggest villains in the show based off of D&D creatures. Season one, it was the Demogorgon, which is a straight up creature from D&D. And then the shadow creature that lasted the whole first three seasons that's actually based off of a Mind Flayer. In recent years, there's been another boom in D&D players thanks to the COVID-19 pandemic that began in 2020. Sales jumped 33% for Wizards of the Coast on all of its D&D products. D&D seemed like a good option to many. There are no limitations, no restraints, and you just got to hang out with your friends. What could go wrong? Well, COVID made it very difficult to see your friends in person, so Websites and apps such as Discord, Roll20, Hero Forge, Tabletop Simulator, they all became huge tools for D&D players. D&D Beyond, an online library of all the different rule books and monster manuals, lore, character sheets, was flooded with new accounts. YouTube channels such as Critical Role and Dimension 20 blew up despite their previous popularity. Critical Role gained so much support that they even started a Kickstarter to turn their first D&D campaign into an animated series. That Kickstarter made over $11.3 million in the first 45 days of it being up. All of that to fund one full 10 episode season that's on Amazon Prime Video. So for anybody wanting to get into D&D, D&D Beyond is a great free tool. They give you everything you need to get started. I would also recommend watching Critical Role or Dimension 20 to get an understanding of how the game works and how it flows. But besides that, just get a couple of your friends together. They might think it's weird. Screw them. They'll have a blast once they do it. And I know you will too. Yeah, man, you can do this too. You go be the hero of your own D&D game. It's great.